Johnny Two Face here, back with another reaction video. This time I'm reacting to Bonus Vikings interview, Ragnar's Death Song, Where Bears and Did the Vikings Really Really Believe in Valhalla from Epic History TV. Now, this is obviously the follow on to the um, Epic History TV's um uh, uh video on the Viking mindset. So this is the bonus interview well, clues in the title. So um so I'm interested to see how this goes, so I thought I'd do a reaction to it, so why not? So, anyway, the usual disclaimer when I react to anything historical, if I don't give so much as what is considered a proper reaction, it's obvious, obvious I don't know much about the subject, but I will, if I do know anything, I will try and add any input that I know, because I'm, it's been years since I've learned any history lessons, and, um, and I might ask the curious questions, which I might need answering from the people in the comments. So, so hopefully, hopefully I'll get some uh, helpful answers, like um, like in my other historical reactions. So, so anyway, without rambling on too much, the link to the original video will be in the description down below. Please go subscribe to Epic History TV. Great great channel and um and uh, let's not waste any more time let's get into this and Ragnar's death song the story of uh, Ragnar's death is of course told in his own saga no. Ragnar but there's also a long poem which mm -hmm. is supposed to have been sung by Ragnar from ah. the snake pit and it's wow. called uh, Krapumal, uh, the Krapumal the song of the crow uh, mm. And it's uh, a death song, but it's also yeah. what they call an Ivy singer. It's a song of life. Wow. In which Ragnar recounts his battles and eventually looks forward to dying and going to wow. feast on the benches of Odin mm. and, of course, predicting the revenge which will be taken for him. And the yeah. last line of it, uh, which I adopted from my book title, is Plyandi uh, Skalikdeya, Laughing Shall I Die. Wow. The gods will invite me in. In death there is no sighing. The hours of life have passed. Laughing shall I die. Wow. That was a beautiful poem. I'm not very clued up on poetry, but that's really like King Arthur's. Oops. It ends, of course, with uh, a great battle in which Rolf is killed mm. by someone who appears to be his cousin, uh, Hugh of Arthur. Well, I said that uh, sagas often have an element of fairy tale, and mm. that's the case with the saga of Rolf Trocki, yeah. because his most famous champion is someone called Budvar Bjarki. And Bjarki means little bear. And Bjarki ah. is, in fact, a weir bear. In oh. the final battle, uh, he takes bear shape. Just like okay. Bear on in Tolkien's The Hobbit, oh, he yeah. fighting in the front rank as a bear. Yeah, I get what um, he means now. Because he actually has two shapes. Yeah, sorry, my I, my mind went blank then when he um told of a little bear, the werebear. I thought, my mind went blank. I thought, yeah, now, I, I feel so stupid now because he did say in um the original Vikings video by Epic History TV that some of the sagas can be picked out as fairy tales and but most of it's due to like uh, memories because people who cannot read and write often have good memories and they take memories seriously so but I have heard I have seen other reactions from the original Vikings video done by Epic History and they did say that this um Professor Shippy here is one of the lead um, professors behind um, behind some of the some of the um, inspiration behind the Lord of the Rings movie. So so that's a really another cool cool fa set of facts. So anyway, I'll I'll run I'll run it back a bit. So <coughs> back into it. And Bjarke is in fact a weird bear. Oh. In the final battle, uh, he takes bear shape, mm. just like Beowulf in Tolkien's The Hobbit. And starts fighting in the front rank as a bear. Wow! Um, because he actually has two shapes: he's human and he's bear. Mm. And he can project the bear shape 
in the uh, saga account, uh, when the final battle takes place, um, uh, Rothman realizes that there is a gigantic bear fighting in their front ranks, hmm. which is tossing people around and knocking wow. them down and crushing them with bear hugs and all sorts. But Goodbar isn't there. So his friend Yalti goes back into the hall and says, uh, he finds Budvar sitting there uh, in the hall on the bench. And he says, you know, come on, Budvar, you're, you're missing the battle. <laughs> Budvar Bjarki, he looks like fairy tale. Uh, but just the same, the giant halls at Thetherborg, they're absolute fact. Mm. So once again, we have a mix of fact and fancy yeah. in the story. And uh, you just have to try to separate the bits out. Yeah. I think I don't have to tell, tell, tell people watching watching this video that um, that's the difficult part about learning history is trying to separate fact from fiction, and a uh, a lot of people who are very well versed in history studies always say try and use newer sources because because now now you know the way we're learning history is, is is improving, even though we don't see it every day to day, but. But it does. I always say, try and learn history with an open mind, and take into number of accounts, even as upsetting as they might be. But sometimes it's when learning history. Sometimes there's very few sources depending on the subject. So. So yeah, that's the main difficult thing about learning learning history. Most of the time is um, you know picking out what is fantasy and what is fact because again it I think it's all down to people's memories and I know I've said this before but usually when people can't cannot read or write they usually have good memories and they'll take them seriously and they'll pass them down so anyway the downfall of the Yom the Vikings into getting involved with Norwegian politics. Wow. And their downfall was caused by the Viking custom of hate stranging. Hate stranging. Which you have to make a boast. Usually wow. when drunk. And when you make the boast, of course, once you're sober, you have to follow it up. Yeah. And that's what they did. So they sold off to help the conquest on. Like, like drunks on a Saturday night here in the UK. Well, like drunks on a Saturday night. Oh, why? And it was their bad luck mm. to run into Horungavar with his supernatural goddess helper, his family oh. goddess helper, Lada Gerda. Mm. Uh, and also his son, Jarl Eric, who was mm. the greatest warrior of the Viking Age. Wow. So the Yom's Vikings were very heavily defeated at the Battle of Hurungavar, which mm. took place probably about 986. Thormo's unfinished the poem. The Battle of Stiklastadir comes at the end of the saga of uh, Olaf uh, Sigurdsson, mm. uh, which was written by Snorri Sturluson uh, sometime about 1230. Wow. The battle, however, took place on 29th of July 1030, so we're mm. now uh, well into uh, recorded history time. Thormo, the poet, survives. Not his fault, he just happens to survive. Mm. And at the end of the battle, when it's all over, he laments that he has not been allowed to join his king. Wow. And at that moment, an arrow comes flying from nowhere and Amazing. hits him. Thormod goes off to the dressing station, a uh, very interesting scene in the Viking dressing station, but wow. it's clear that they can't do anything for him. So he starts to compose a final poem, which is about his own wound. And uh, he goes through the poem in a very complex uh, uh, metrical stanza, and he dies on his feet without quite, quite finishing, finishing it. it. Wow. The last line is incomplete. Enkark Rosa, En Rosa, Rosa Grun Kona Mani, Jan Stender Fastet Forna, Fens Digi Mer Benya, Dat Velder Mer En Maira, Mar Rosa Mu Troda, Duke of Danstra Valtma, Dan Krita Spor. I am not red, yet the swim woman has a man unwounded the ancient iron stands fast in my martial wounds that makes me pale now where on gold wave fire the deep track at dark of danish weapons 
Fortunately, standing by is the teenage Harold Hardrada, and Harold was very keen on poetry. That, when I watched the original Vikings video, that really, that really took me by surprise. And very skillful in mm. scouting meters. And he listens to the poem and he says what he was going to say was, and he finishes the poem for Thor Mode in wow. exactly the right rhyme and meter. Mm. Uh, so the poem is finally completed, but Thor Mode has died standing on his feet. One of the nice things about Harold Hardrada, in fact I think it's the only nice thing about Harold Hardrada, is that uh, he was a genuine uh, devotee of poetry. Wow. Uh, his whole saga has accounts of him favouring poets, criticising poets, making his own poetry up, etc. Mm. I have to say also that he was a, a poetic snob. Yeah. He very much preferred the difficult meters which are almost impossible to compose and almost impossible to understand. Wow. But just the same, he was a, a patron of the arts, though you better not get your rhymes and half rhymes mixed up. No. He didn't like it if people did that. Do Vikings believe in Valhalla? Everyone's familiar with the idea of Valhalla mm. uh, and because of the Valkyries. If you are a warrior like Kirk Douglas in the famous Vikings movie and you die sword in hand, then your soul will be picked up by the Valkyries, the choosers of the slain, and you'll be taken off to Odin's halls, Valhutl, the halls of the slain, where you will feast and frolic and fight uh, with your companion warriors uh, for the rest of eternity. Well, that's the, uh, the story, um, and no doubt some Vikings believed it. I mean, from what I, I haven't learned about, it's another thing I haven't learned about in a long time, is uh, Norse mythology, but it's believed that these un, these dead warriors in Odin's Hall will were... Odin was going to use him to help help him help him during the Battle of Ragnarok, where the if you know already know about if you're very clued up on Norse mythology, you know that all the gods die and the world will be destroyed and then be reborn. But that's the long story short. So anyway, and some no doubt did not. Wow. Because that, I think, is a story particularly associated with uh, the followers of Odin. Mm. And, of course, there are others who are followers of Thor, or of Freya, or of Heimdall, or of Njurður, or one of the many other gods in the Viking pantheon. So I'm sure uh, there were many different ideas of what happened after you were dead. But that is the, uh, the prominent one and the familiar one. And, and we find it written down by, by Snorri Sturluson. Mm. It's part of his digest, his little handbook of Norse mythology. With thanks to Holyrood Church. Thank, Thank you to our Patreon supporters for making Epic History TV possible. You can find a link to Tom Shippey's highly... And that'll, and that'll do it. This has been... This has been another interesting video by Epic History TV. It's another ma well done video, and you know what? Ever, I might have another look at this because um, it's quite interesting how you know, like there was some how individual it is, and it does give a better, better, um, a better. Um, in sort of um insider information as I probably the wrong word but um a way of saying a better of understanding understanding the Viking mindset and and well it's better explained in the in the first Vikings video because it does say in the description of um this one to um sorry to um check out the original video before watching this one so anyway anyway that'll do it if, if you like this reaction please like comment and subscribe and i'll see you in the next